Niners, baby! Just took years off my life, but got the dub. 24 to 21 over the Green Bay Packers. The divisional round in the playoffs in my 49er loving life has always been a stressful time for the most part. Very, very back and forth close games and this was much of the same the whole game was back and forth pouring down rain for the most part so people were dropping balls the Niners had four drop balls Purdy came out the gates with a glove on and took it off and there was just times that you could just tell the ball came out of his hand just weird same thing for Jordan Love both quarterbacks were kind of struggling in certain moments because receivers were getting knocked off their routes a lot easier because they couldn't get their footing so you threw it to where they're supposed to be and they weren't there yet because of the timing being off and that was a good thing that the Packers defense was doing they were knocking the Niners out of rhythm knocking the timing off and the, the rain didn't help that the beautiful aspect of this game for me as a Niner fan as a Brock Purdy defender everybody got exactly what they have been saying they wanted to see. They Everybody wanted to see Brock Purdy lead his team down the field in a meaningful drive to go win the game. And that's exactly what happened. Niners down 21 to 17. Brock Purdy leads them down the field. CMC caps it off with a touchdown run. Like I think it was like six yards out. We go up with around a minute to go. Our defense holds them. Dre Greenlaw gets his second pick, and the game's done. Jordan Love made another inerrant cross his body throw that he wishes he probably could have back. Now, mind you, Brock Pretty threw a couple of balls in that game that should have been picked, but in the game of football, should have, could have, would have, bro. Either you catch or you don't. Might I remind everybody in the whole wide world, Patty Mahomes, in his first three years in the league, led the league. This is a stat that doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Led the league in most dropped interceptions thrown in his first three years in the league. And I'm not saying Purdy is Mahomes. I'm just saying, unless the defender catches it, it's freaking whatever. Because we dropped a couple, too, that Jordan Love threw to us. So Jordan Love could have threw four. But, like, that, that whole coulda, shoulda, woulda stuff, get out of here with that. There was some throws from Jordan Love. That made me say, wow, that kid's going to be good. He's ascending. He's he's definitely got something, something going on there for sure. And the Packers, LaFleur, like the play calling and the scheming was fantastic. Just the way, like I already said, knocking the Niners off of their rhythm, off of their routes, disrupting the 49ers offensive line because... We have a very subpar line. I know everybody likes to say, well, Brock has all these weapons to throw to and CMC to hand it off to and Juice to block for him. Like, he's surrounded by talent, and he is. But you know what we don't have? We don't have a really good offensive line. We have a, a line in the bottom third of the league. Yeah, we have a Hall of Famer in our left tackle, but everybody else is... I mean, I feel like Aaron Banks, our left guard, is Pro Bowl caliber, but... Our center on over to our right guard has, or to our right tackle has moments, but they're not good. They get beat and it's just like, and then, you know, they, they throw in different people in there and it's just weird. I, I don't trust it. And that's what scares me moving forward. Like a little, let's just say like the lions, if we had to play them next week, Hutchinson coming off the edge or we going, going against the Ravens in a couple of weeks in the Super Bowl, for example, potentially. Like, they already showed what you can do when you have good defenders on the line, a good front seven. Putting pressure on my Niners means we're going to have a very, very close game because that's how you make things go in your favor if you're playing the San Francisco 49ers. So the, the Green Bay Packers did a really good job of disrupting from the inside out. The thing is, Brock Purdy does really good under pressure. And little does a lot of people realize that he had the highest completion percentage when under pressure this year. The highest completion percentage in the entire league. The most pass, um, the most passes over 20 yards, the most touchdowns, the most everything when pressured, when blitzed. So even though I'm watching the game and I'm stressed out, my heart rate is up, I have no reason to think Brock's just going to continually just throw these god-awful passes or anything as I like tap into my Jimmy G trauma from years prior because more times often than not, he's going to put the ball where he needs to go. Tonight, it was hard for both quarterbacks to always put the ball where they need to go for a number of reasons beyond the pressure that was happening on both both ends, uh, both teams. 
but the rain was a, was a huge element and both coaches knew each other and they're they're so close that it was it was gonna be a back and forth and back and forth a game of inches kind of battle and it was especially in the rain you figure that running backs are gonna rule supreme in the game and kind of control the pacing of everything and i mean aaron jones first running back against the 49ers in 51 games to run for over 100 yards including the playoffs it's kind of insane so Congrats to Aaron Jones for balling out like he did last week against Dallas. Can I just talk about Ambry Thomas for the 49ers looking lost out there? Those huge pass interference penalties against him were completely his fault. And like, what are we, what are we doing right now? You know, like what, are, what are, actually are we doing? I was scared at the end of the game because I was like, they're going to just pick on Ambry Thomas and they should have. But he looked lost in moments and I'm just like, oh my gosh, he is the fish of our defense tonight. He was a fish. You know who wasn't? Everybody else, for the most part. Uh, Diamonor Lenore had an awesome game. Obviously, our linebackers did. Javarius Ward, he, he, he had a couple pass breakups. And Tashawn Gibson got there a little bit early on that pass interference call. I think it was in the first quarter. It was it was chippy for the most part in that game. And I'm there for it. You know, something that really, really messed up the Niners' mojo early on was Debo getting hurt. When you have two weeks off to prepare one of your main pieces running the ball catching the ball running the ball after the catch somebody that could be in the backfield i mean just my gosh goes out midway through the second quarter that's a big that's a big deal which goes into my whole thing with brock Purdy. everybody's wanted to see him when all of the infinity stones weren't there they wanted to see him in the elements they wanted to see him down in the fourth quarter and bring them back and that's exactly what he did there were it was a sloppy game all the way around for everybody but what do you do when your back's against the wall and your team has to score a touchdown or you lose and you go home what brock Purdy did is lead his team down the field CMC said, I got this, punched it in the end zone at the end, dub. And that's all I can say. Dub City, baby. I don't know if we play the Lions. I don't know if we play the Bucks. I actually had a bad dream, a freaking nightmare, about three weeks ago that we lost to the Lions in the NFC Championship. Pray that that's not the case. We'll see. But we're in the NFC Championship. We're hosting it, nevertheless. And we'll talk about it next week. So stay tuned for that episode. I do these weekly recaps every single week. Normally just on Instagram slash Facebook and YouTube, but now I'm starting to put these on TikTok too. Comment down below any of your thoughts, any of your feelings on all that happened tonight. I mean, I didn't I didn't even really, really talk about stats too, too much because it's like it's the playoffs. I, I could care less about a lot of things and it was sloppy and I was just like, you got to do whatever you got to do to get the dub. And I think the biggest stats tonight were that final drive of the 49ers the two picks for dre greenlaw sealing the game because for the longest time we couldn't get a stop couldn't couldn't get green bay off the field on third down and then once we started winning that turnover battle it was done like green bay ran that kickoff back and i'm like oh, come on like we would just, it's like we just could not stop them in big moments until we did until we did juan jennings really stepped up with debo's absence tonight like really stepped up made some great catches and he actually had 61 yards i'm there for that all day and i must say before this video is done it looked like brandon Ayuk was frustrated at certain times it looked like brandon Ayuk and brock were not on the same page and brandon Ayuk whole demeanor was very riled up and i think the packers really did a good job of getting under his skin and getting his head out of the game and Brock stopped looking his way something to think about something to look out for also there was one big time third down play in Ray Ray McLeod his route just looked ugly Ray Ray McLeod can't run routes bro like I'm I'm happy to have him on special teams uh, he he ain't it when it comes to receiving him and Brock have no chemistry together like for real and when he runs his routes they're so sloppy they're so sloppy can't deal with it that's just something I've noticed in the in the few moments I've seen and I don't I don't think Brock really likes to go to him but sometimes he tries and it's just like come on nevertheless nfc championship i'll talk to you after that game until then hey